right, hello again everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you so much again for joining me. I apologize, it's been a few weeks since I was able to post last, but uh, thanks you want, thank you once again for tuning in. Uh, we are going to continue our discussion today, of course, where we left off the last time. So jumping right into today's discussion, we are going to be talking about the electrical uh, section of the overhead panel here. So as with the last couple you know, episodes I did, I, I first just kind of want to start off, give me, you know, just kind of some high level information about the electrical system on the airplane. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about uh, a few different things. And of course, we'll, we'll get into the, the button usage or, you know, what they do, what all the lights mean and, and all this kind of stuff, the fault lights. And, and then we'll kind of wrap it up uh, with just a, a couple little um, extra, you know, data points. That I just kind of want to point out that that might be, um, I thought were you know just kind of neat about the Airbus, so that might be I think unique to this airplane, and just kind of cool stuff to tell you about. So, uh, jumping into the discussion, let's first talk about the different ways that we can get power onto the airplane. There's many ways that we can do this, of course. So, uh, at a very basic level, we have two batteries on the airplane that can provide some very base level um, you know power to the to the system. We can't do a whole lot with the batteries, but we can certainly use the batteries for some basic functions. And we can actually use the batteries to get the APU started, which is very important because from there we can, you know, get everything powered uh, normally. Um, we also have the, uh, the ability to get power from the ground source. So this could be um, from a jetway. Most of the time in the United States here anyways, um, we, we are pulling up to a jet bridge that has power, you know, rigged into it. And it's, you know, the, the common practice that, you know, you pull up to the gate and there's a, a plug that, that comes from the... Um, the jet bridge power there just goes right into the airplane and, and you, know, you can get power in the, the airplane in this fashion. Uh, also in a lot of other countries where you're using like a hard stand operation, for example, they'll use something called a GPU or a ground power unit. And this is, you've probably seen these around, you know, all over the place at various airports. And it just looks like a, a big like rectangle box on wheels pretty much. And it's usually just kind of hanging out up, you know, towards the front section of the aircraft. And it's just like a, it's a generator on wheels. So a ground power unit. So um, you know, like we said, those are our ground power uh, sources that we can use to power the network on the airplane. Uh, of course, we also have the APU or the auxiliary power unit, and that's kind of a, that little engine, little jet engine anyways, in the back tail section of the airplane that we can use to do a whole bunch of different stuff. And of course, we have the main generators. So, you know, each engine, you know, engine one and engine two has a main generator that can provide, you know, the system with, with all the power it needs. Uh, and we've also got the emergency generator that's powered through the rat. And uh, one thing, interesting thing to point out here anyways, if you guys missed the discussion, I, I think we talked about it in the hydraulic section uh, when we tackled that one. But if you remember, like one really interesting thing I think about, uh, you know, the, the design uh, characteristic of the Airbus, at least with this emergency generator uh, as it relates to the rat, is that on a lot of other airplanes, when the, the rat comes out and that little propeller thing starts spinning, um, that's actually, you know, an electrical generator in and of itself. But on the Airbus, it's interesting that the rat, um, you know, propeller mechanism actually just drives a hydraulic pump. And that hydraulic pressure um, in the blue system uh, actually is used to, to drive an electrical generator. So kind of a, a weird little, you know, design characteristic, like I said, that I think is unique to the Airbus. I haven't seen that in any other airplanes uh, that I've flown, but just... Uh, one little, like I said, unique thing to, to kind of recap and talk about that. Um, and, and I also want to point out that um, with the, the ground source, the APU source, or either of the main gens by themselves, all of those are capable of providing power to the entire electrical network on the airplane. So, you know, the, there's, you know we'll, we'll kind of talk a little bit more about this later, but there's all this kind of like power switching, you know, prioritization. There's all this kind of relay work that's going on kind of, uh, automatically that, you know, we're not really doing a whole lot of uh, interaction with, but the, the plane is constantly just knows like the best place to get the power in any given scenario. It's, it's kind of interesting, but um, you know, the, the other thing that's important to understand about that too, or just, you know, the, the, the point I think why they've designed it in this way is that you know, everything with airplanes, of course, is all about redundancy. So, you know, especially electrical power is so paramount and so important to, to fly in this airplane um, that you really can't do, uh, much with the airplane unless you you have to have like some kind of basic like bare bones like level of power uh, to you know to fly the thing so it's just like we said this kind of concept of redundancy that you know the, the important thing just to drive home and, and recap like I said is just that fact that um, the um, 
each of those sources by themselves is capable of pri providing enough power to fly the airplane normally or power normally. So uh, the next thing um, I wanted to kind of talk about is uh, we, we kind of mentioned it. Um, let's talk about this this power prioritization a little bit that the airplane utilizes. So like I said, it's all done automatically. Um, and I've got a graphic that I want you guys to look at. And I, I don't want you to really, th this is a really busy uh, you know, uh, depiction here of just some of the network on the airplane. Uh, so there's a lot, you know, obviously going on underneath the hood there, but all that I want you to pay attention to is, you know, you look at all these little areas where we have these, um, these line contactors, and these are basically, you know, relays in the system that these are portions of the electrical system that can be opened or closed. And like I said, the airplane is, is smart in the sense it always knows like where the power should be flowing. And if, you know, it, it loses power from, you know, one end of the system and it knows it needs it somewhere else. It'll automatically you know, open and close these relays and it's doing all this kind of neat stuff, you know, without us having to think about it. So, um, like I said, I just wanted to kind of, you guys to have a concept about, you know, what, you know, just the fact that these relays are there and, and the plane is, is always doing this, this job for us. So we have kind of an acronym that we learn when we go through ground school. So on the Airbus, we learn um, it's, it's gear B. So it just kind of tells us um, the power priority that the airplane tries to um, to utilize, so it'll look and say like, all right, you know, the first one, G is generator, uh, E is external power, A is APU, R is rat, and B is battery. So kind of in that order, the plane kind of shops around for what available source it might have, and it'll just use whatever it knows it has to power what it thinks it needs to power. And uh, it, it you know, does a great, efficient job, obviously, of this. They've, they've done a great job designing it. So... Um, let's talk a little bit too. I, I wanted to kind of step you through um, just a let's let's consider like a a um, a general flight operation kind of thing. I'll, I'll just bring my graphic up so you can kind of uh, look at this while we're talking about it. Actually, um, I'll bring uh, a different one up. Sorry for the um, I meant to take a photo of the actual uh, the screen in the cockpit, but the, I, I have this graphic just uh, off of a, uh, a study poster board from when I went in ground school, but it just, this is what the status display shows in the electrical page here, but you can just kind of look at some of this stuff as we're talking about it. Um, it, it might help you make a few connections or whatever, but let's, let's take the, um, and, and before I start this, like not everything that I guess that I'm going to talk about is depicted on this screen. So, you know, I, I, there's, the, the really uh, the best way to kind of accurately depict this to you guys would be to, to take a screenshot of this status display like at each stage in the game kind of thing. I wish I could do that, but it's just kind of hard to um, to accomplish that with what I have right now. And uh, as a side note, um, I had a couple uh, viewers write in with a really great suggestion. I'd really like to implement this. It's going to take me some time to, to get it um, figured out. But uh, just, just to be able to use like a flight simulator or something to, to actually manipulate the buttons and kind of show you, you know, as we do things, like what's happening, I think it'd be kind of a, a great tool to, um, to just assist to explain some of this stuff to you guys. So hopefully I can get that dialed in in the near future, but uh, no promises. But for the meantime, uh, you'll just have to listen to me talking, I guess. So um, like I said, let's just suppose the situation of like we're coming out. Uh, it's, you know, the first flight of the day. We're, we come out to the airplane. We walk down the jet bridge. Of course, you know, the, the jet bridge is plugged in. Uh, so the airplane is getting all its electrical power, you know, through the jet bridge. Everything on the airplane that needs to be powered is powered. So we go up into the flight deck. We do our kind of first initial like setup. And uh, we floor all our switches and everything. We turn the batteries to the auto position. And uh, we just kind of hang out. We're using ground power. So people start coming down, the plane's loading up. Um, about 15 minutes prior to when we're ready to push, uh, we'll start the APU. So at this point, uh, we make a changeover. So when the APU comes up online, it's providing enough power and everything's operating normally, we'll you know, use a button and we'll switch over to tell the airplane, hey, use the APU um, you know, uh, generator here. because. Uh, like we said, kind of coming back to that that gear B or that power prioritization until you actually manipulate the system, the, the plane's going to just try to pull power from the external source. So um, like I said, we, we have to press a button to, to tell it to uh, use the APU power. So uh, we close the doors, we push back, we start the engines. So um, let's let's just suppose that we're going to single engine taxi out to the, to the runway because it's a busy day and there's a long lineup of airplanes to wait. So 
you know, of course we, we start the number one engine, so main gen one comes online. And at this point in time, we've got main gen one online, we've got the APU generator online, so you've, you've actually got um, power uh, flowing to um, the opposing sides of the system or you know, through AC bus one and AC bus two and all the, the parts of the network that, that those uh, connect up to. Um, they're, they're being powered independently at this point, like we said, with the APU gen and the main generator. So we taxi out to the runway. We're about you know five to 10 minutes prior to takeoff. We start the number two engine. So main gen number two comes online. The, all the, the magic happens with all the, uh, the relay switching and everything. And the plane you know now is drawing power from main gen one and main gen two. APU gen is still there, but we have to, you know, we shut the, the APU generator down so that gets taken offline. It's obviously not powering anything anymore. So we go on our way, we fly our flight, we get to the destination, we land and, and you know, we're taxiing and everything kind of happens in reverse as you'd imagine. So let's say, you know, a standard, you know, let's say we've got a, um, I don't know, a longer taxi in. So we, we decide that after the cool down period of the engine has elapsed, we're gonna, you know, single engine taxi into the gate. So um, the, uh, it's actually interesting. Like one of the first things you do when you land the Airbus, like part of the after landing sequence we do is we start the APU right away. So um, when you get to the point where you're ready to shut down the number two engine, which is always what we do when we single engine taxi, we shut number two down first. Uh, the APU is kind of ready there to assist and back up and uh, you have two you know generators at this point so once again we're kind of back to that that situation where main gen one and the apu gen is powering you know opposing sides of the system and one other like interesting thing to tell you about uh, the airbus i'm not sure I, I i believe i think they all operate in the same way i'm not sure if this was kind of like an option thing you know out of the factory that carriers could decide if they wanted this option or not but um, the IFE or the in-flight entertainment on the fleet that I operate, um, it won't operate on the ground if you have only one um, generator. So like, let's say we weren't, you know, we forgot to turn on the APU and we shut down the number two engine and we're just down to, um, you know, the, uh, the number one main uh, generator. Um, the system just kind of knows it's designed to like shed that extra stuff that it doesn't think it needs. So it's just kind of like a, an interruption thing for the passengers in the back. It's not like a safety thing or anything like that. But, you know, that's, that's like part of the reason why we always turn the APU on like right away, you know, when we land. So when we get to that state, snapping back to our situation, uh, we're taxiing in. We've got the number one engine still running. The APU generator is, is still running. So we, we pull into the gate and, uh, you know, they chalk us. And we shut down uh, the number one engine. So we've still got the APU generator up. So it's providing power to everything on the airplane. So no interruptions. Uh, we, uh, you know, we open up the main cab cabin door and people start offloading. It's very typical that the ground crew, like as part of their normal things that they do, is they'll go ahead and plug in that the jetway power again to the airplane. So once they plug in, we can see, you know, hey, this thing is providing good power. We reach up, we hit our switch, and uh, we change over to the, um, the ground power. And at this point, we can take the APU down and out of the loop if we don't need it anymore. And so we're kind of back to that condition where um, everything on the airplane is just powered, you know, by everything from the jet bridge or the, or the ground source. So. Um, and then when we, we secure the airplane, we actually, um, one of the last things we do with the electrical system is, you know, we, we, um, we actually will we'll hit a switch to kind of um, disconnect the, or tell the plane like to stop using that, that ground power. And, and I'm gonna come back to this because there's one little interesting thing. It was one of those data points that I wanted to talk about towards the end of the, the, um, the presentation here. But, but anyways, uh, you know, once again, our normal day, we, you know, we reach up, we turn the, uh, the external power switch off, we turn the battery switches, the opposition, everything goes cold and dark again inside the flight deck. We leave, we go to the hotel, or we go home, we do whatever we do. And, uh, you know, that, that kind of ties up, you know, the, the whole loop of the, the progression of power and, and what's happening throughout the course of a general flight. So, you know, ho hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I know it's kind of a lot, uh, really rapidly that I was throwing, um, thrown at you there, but uh, that is that. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to start to talk about all these buttons and uh, each one of them, what they do. Um, so let's let's start at the top here. Uh, the, these are these are very obvious. These these readouts here just tell the battery voltage. Um, you know, for for the bat one and bat two, 
Um, these next switches here, battery one and battery two, they're, they're a little bit more than, um, they're not just on and off switches or, or connect and disconnect the battery to the system. Like everything else in the Airbus, um, there's an auto mode for everything and it's brilliant. Um, but when the switches are in the you know, pushed in position, as they are right here, uh, the batteries are in the auto mode. And that just means that the airplane has the ability to like, you know, connect and disconnect the batteries to the system, however it thinks it needs to, um, or, or at whatever points and times it, it thinks it needs to do that. So, you know, if there was some interruption to like all the power in the airplane, these things can come alive and provide power. Also, if the airplane decides that, oh, these things need to be charged up because they've been depleted a little bit, it'll hook them in. And you know this this power transfer can occur, so um, you know just just some examples there of you know when they're in the pushed in or auto position, you know that's that's kind of what's happening, you know underneath the hood there. And uh, if you push them, um, you push the buttons and they pop out, um, you'll see uh, off lights get indicated. And I, I think I'll just probably um, I'll bring up the lights test slide here, and, and uh, I'll just kind of use this to talk off the. Uh, or, or talk about the remainder of the, the content here. But anyways, um, you can see the off lights would come on. Um, and uh, like we said, if we, if we push those switches and pop the buttons out. So in, in that instance, you're telling the airplane, hey, like I don't want you to do your auto thing. I just want you to be completely disconnected from the system and stay disconnected from the system for whatever reason. You know, there's there's various cases. I, I, I you know, off the top of my head, I mean, the, the biggest one that I can think of is if the, you know, the battery is overheating or, you know, um, if something was going on, you, you need to take it out of the system. You know, that's, you know, why you would do that when you're, while you're operating. Of course, um, you know, if you're, you're leaving the airplane, you just want it to be disconnected. There's no reason for them to stay like, you know, overnight, you know, completely connected in the system there. So they designed it this way. Um, the, the fault lights, uh, that just means there's actually a fault with the, um, the battery charging limiter. So uh, it's, it's actually an interesting part of the system where, where kind of like I said a moment ago, the batteries know, you know when they need to get you know, charged up. They need to you know, take, take power on it. And there's this, this battery charging limiter that kind of exists there that regulates this whole process so it just says hey you know these these things are topped off like turn off the the flow of electricity in here because they don't need it anymore so uh, that is what the um, the uh, fault light indicates and, and more specifically I, I just want to tell you like right out of the book it just says you know charging current for the corresponding battery increases at an abnormal rate so um, the uh, when the fault light comes on the, the battery actually automatically disconnects itself from the system as well so Kind of an interesting uh, thing to mention there. Uh, the next one, uh, let's talk about this, the AC essential feed button and light here. So um, we have this AC essential bus that kind of exists and lives there. Um, you know, we, we have these kind of like bare bones components that if things were going really bad and we just, you know, we wanted to immediately power like, you know, the most vital things that we need to like keep flying the airplane. You have this, this AC essential bus that kind of lives on its own. Now, normally this AC essential bus gets its power through AC bus one and, you know, wherever that part is flowing through, it, it'll get it from there. But uh, if for some reason um, in, you know, when the, the button is pushed in and all these lights are out, it's in the auto mode. Um, if that fails, it'll automatically switch over to get its power from AC bus two. Um, or, of course, if we wanted to do this manually, <clears throat> we could reach up and push the button and kind of force the system to, you know, tell the AC essential bus to get its power from AC bus too. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, you know, we could, could go deeper on that one, but uh, I'll just kind of leave it at the surface level with that. Uh, these buttons on the left here, the, the commercial and the uh, galley and cabin um, power push buttons. So these are kind of, um, these are here because we've got, you know, like we said on the airplane, you know, the designers like know that you know there are some parts of this electrical system that are very important to continue flying the airplane. If you were having some problem getting enough power in the airplane, you would want to immediately be able to like cut some parts of the system out. So, for example, on this commercial section here, um, the the components that live on this are things like the the interior lighting. There's like the the toilet power. There's you know some stuff in the laboratories. I think the um, like an automated, you know, passenger briefing or something. There's, there's various components that live on there. I, there's a list I, I was looking earlier. I think it was, you know, 
eight or ten items on there. We won't we won't go through them all, but it's things like that. So um, this uh, this button here just serves you know the purpose of if we needed to disconnect that stuff from the system, we can just reach up and we push the button and uh, it goes to the off position and um, we can accomplish that. Uh, same thing with the uh, the galley and the cabin power. Um, these are um, you know higher demand items. So you know if you you think about what's in the galley, well you know you got you got ovens, you got a couple of coffee makers, you've got um, in the the cabin portion of this is like the in seat electrical power, so we can all like plug our iPhones and, and laptops in and all this kind of stuff and be entertained throughout the course of our flight. So you know those things kind of live on um, on that part of the system. So. Once again, uh, the, the switch usually stays in the auto position, so all these lights are out and the button is in. Um, if a, um, a fault happens, it just means that the system is demanding, um, I want to make sure I'm saying this right, um, when any generator load is above 100% of its rated output. So it's, it's basically like you know, sucking the system dry kind of thing, and you know, the plane saying like, hey, whoa, like we, don't, we don't have enough power like power all this stuff so I'm just gonna um, I'm going to uh, take this out out of the system and it will um, it'll shed uh, the uh, yeah it'll automatically shed you know those galley ca uh, galley and cabin components when it determines that it needs to so uh, and then of course the if we push the button ourselves we could do it we could accomplish that ourselves if for some reason we need to, to cut all those components out so the next one here, let's talk about this bus tie switch. Uh, just, you know, kind of as it, it makes sense if you just kind of look at the, the lines here in this, this schematic that's like right on the panel itself. Um, the, the bus tie uh, serves a couple functions, but it basically allows you to get power from, you know, various portions of the system. You see how Gen 1, APU, Gen, external power, and Gen 2, they all kind of hook through this. Um, this bus tie, <clears throat> once again, the, the switch usually um, in the you know the pushed in or the auto position it just it's allowed to kind of do its thing and change all those relays and do all that kind of stuff that you know we talked about before so um, if for some reason you need to isolate various parts of the system for any you know sorts of failures of course it would probably be you know directed by the ecam or the the qrh or something you could actually accomplish that um, you, could, you could put a break in the system essentially using the the button and pushing the off or pushing it into the off position so um, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Uh, let's talk, you know, kind of while we're down here, you know, just the, the APU generator switch here. Uh, it always stays in the pushed in or the auto position, so it just kind of allows the APU generator power to flow through the system when the generator comes online and the system sees that it's up to speed and it's providing adequate, you know, voltage and phase and all this kind of stuff. So. Um, if there uh, is uh, a fault with the generator, so it's not doing its job properly, um, it's not putting out the right amount of power, the fault light will come on and um, it'll, um, it'll shut down the, the, uh, the generator anyways in the APU. And uh, you can use the, uh, the switch here. You, know, you go to the off position, it actually recycles or resets the system. Um, or of course, if for some reason you needed to do it yourself, you could also use that button to accomplish that and put it in the off position. So, um, the, the fault light and the off light there, that's what those mean. Uh, the external power button here, a um, couple indications that we have. Um, they're, they're both on right now. Uh, you normally wouldn't see it like this. And this is the only reason we're doing this is because we're doing a lights test. But you know, normally, you know, one of these would be on, one of them would be off. So um, when the, the ground crew plugs in the, uh, the external power the plane has the ability to look at what's coming into the airplane and say, oh, this is the right, you know, frequency, uh, voltage and phase. Uh, oh, this power is good. So this green available light will come on and just, it'll tell us, you know, on the flight deck, oh, okay, we got good power coming from the outside. You can then reach up, you can press the button and the, this little blue on indicator will come on. And the green available would go out at that point, but that's just telling, you know, you're telling the plane, hey, I want you to draw your power from the uh, external power source here. So this is really just kind of like a, like an, think of it like an, not totally like an on off, but it's like a, hey, I want to receive power or I don't want to receive power from the, the external source there. So um, that is what that does. Uh, and then the last two guys to talk about here, I mean, they're, they're identical on both sides, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, reasons there. Uh, we just have the, the IDG or the integrated drive um, button here. So 
Uh, it's a guarded switch. Uh, once again, uh, the integrated drive generator, um, just a, a real like high level, you know, kind of um, explanation of this. I mean, we have these these engines out on the, uh, you know, they hang off the wings there and they're spinning at, at kind of different, um, you know, different speeds, of course, you know, depending on what phase of flight you're in. They're either going really fast, they're back at idle, they're doing all kinds of stuff. So you kind of have this mechanism um, that's kind of like the automatic transmission on a car that just kind of allows for a constant spinning of the generator because we, we want constant power output. Um, so it, it's accomplished through this integrated drive generator. So it's just, you know, part of like how this main generator does its job. But, you know, the integrated drive generator light here is there if, if for some reason, or I'm sorry, the, the button is there. If for some reason we need to, to disconnect the IDG from the system, we could do that. Um, you'll get a fault um, if you have, it's a um, high oil temperature or low oil pressure. Uh, in the integrated drive uh, generator system there, and you could you could disconnect the thing from the system. And of course, like we talked about this on a, a previous presentation as well. Uh, but uh, if you do disconnect it during flight, you've got to um, have maintenance reconnect it when you get on the ground. So, uh, and of course, the guarded switch. If you don't remember from last time, uh, that is one that you need to verify with your flying partner before you switch it, because it's a very important uh, component in the airplane. Uh, next one, uh, just the generator uh, switches here. They they always stay in the in the pushed in or the auto position, so it just allows the you know the power to flow through main gen one or main gen two, and it comes up to speed and provides adequate power and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, the fault lights will illuminate if you have you know some kind of like a um, there's like a um, an under voltage or an over voltage. I mean, there's all sorts of different conditions, but if the plane basically looks at it and says, hey, this thing is not doing its job. It's not putting out the right amount of power. Something's, you know, maybe shorting or it's, you know, a couple other conditions. I can't remember the top of my head, but it'll give you the fault there. And uh, you could uh, go ahead and uh, you could take it out of the system. Uh, you could, you know, push the button yourself and you could turn it off and just take it out. And uh, that would accomplish that. So um, that kind of, I think that tackles all of the buttons and the lights for you guys. Um, as always, I try to tell you which of these buttons do we actually really use in our day to day. Um, that's a simple one. They all stay in the auto position except for these battery switches here, which like I said, they only come on at the beginning of the day and they only go off at the end of the day when we're done flying. And the uh, external uh, power switch gets used, you know, pretty much on every operation, or at least, you know, all the times that we're using external power. So pretty simple. Uh, those are those are the only ones we're really using uh, frequently anyways. So uh, as I said, I, I kind of, I, I made some notes on just a few data points that I wanted to kind of talk about. One thing I think is really interesting, the way Airbus designed the plane, and I think other aircraft, you know, certainly, you know, have, you know, kind of a similar system, but you know, if you, you picture the, the, the life or the day-to-day -day operation of the airplane, you know, we go out, we fly it and we operate it. Well, these things are sitting, you know, at a station like overnight for, you know, let's say six or eight hours or something. And, and during this time, there's a lot of service that, it, that, you know, is happening to the airplane. You know, maybe the mechanics come on and they're working on something or, you know, there's, there's cabin um, cleaners and service folks that do what they do to, you know, get the planes ready to go for the next day. So um, they've designed the plane uh, to have circuitry or a, a way to provide power to only like the essential things to let these service people do their job. So you don't have to power up the whole airplane to like turn the lights on the back to like vacuum the floors or like clean the lab out or something like that. So they've, they've incorporated this into, um, into the airplane. It's, it's kind of neat. If you were to walk into the, you know, the forward door here, there's this little panel that's kind of, it's up on the ceiling. Um, and there's there's just this maintenance bus on switch in there and you know the, the ground service people can go in there and flip it on so you know as, as long as you have to have power coming into the airplane you know through the external source of course um, but you know it's it's just you know one little interesting thing I think that they've designed this in the airplane to kind of make everybody's life easy and uh, you know it's I'd, I'd argue that it's probably like a safety thing you know because you, you probably wouldn't want you know untrained people up in the flight deck you know you know flipping switches and powering up everything and having the ability to, you know, maybe, maybe get themselves uh, into trouble or, or damage something or who knows what. So uh, I think it's interesting. Um, one other thing that I think is really neat too about the Airbus, not, none of the other planes that I've flown have done this in such a profound manner. And I, I don't know if it just has to do with the placement of the relays and the electrical system with how they've designed it. But 
when you're up in that flight deck and you you start flipping some of the switches to get the power to change from source to source like there's this really loud like clunking noise that's like it almost like the first time you hear it you're like oh my gosh like what is happening here <laughs> did we just break something i mean it is like this loud like clunking this changing over of of power source it's really attention grabbing and you know the screens flicker and you, like you say you kind of hear this noise and you almost like feel this vibration so it's just kind of a i think it's kind of an interesting thing but there you know it just kind of calls to your attention too like how much power is like really flowing like all around your head and you know at all, all points in time you know when you're, when you're sitting in there so kind of a neat thing um if you uh you ever get to to be up front when they're when they're changing over power um I also wanted to kind of um, explain a situation too that I think a lot of folks like you might have seen this like as a passenger on an airplane or experienced this, but you know when you're like sitting at the gate and you're like half boarded and out of nowhere just like power goes down, the lights go out in the cabin. Um, this is a really frustrating situation for for you know everybody. Of course, it's an inconvenience to the passengers, but it's also you know really um, it's inconvenient to us up front. We're trying to set everything up and get ready to go fly, and you know sometimes you know you wash out you know work that you've done in the the FMS. Um, I mean everything is like supposed to be stored in there, but sometimes it, it you know it drops things. So you kind of got to come back and redo things. But um, basically this and this is like what we always try to stress to the ground crews, and you know they're not you know like nobody's doing this stuff intentionally, but it's just kind of the way it goes sometimes. But like when you, you know, walk up to an airplane and you pull the, um, that power cord out without things being properly configured in the flight deck, it's, it's kind of like the equivalent of like walking over to your buddy's computer that he's like sitting there, like, you know, (laughs) doing whatever is his, uh, you know, school project or something. You just like, you rip the power cord out of the wall, just out of nowhere. It's very, it's not the way that the machine is designed to be powered down. It's, it's a interruption to the system. And, uh, as we said, it's very frustrating for, for everybody. So like what has probably happened is, you know, keep in mind the the ground crews are supposed to like walk, you know, into, you know, eyesight of the, the people in the flight deck. And they're supposed to give you this symbol, like, Hey, like, is it okay to disconnect ground power? It's, that's what this means right here. Um, And sometimes like as simple of a a hand signal as that is, it does get, you know, confused and lost in translation sometimes. (laughs) And so they'll think you're ready to have the ground power pulled. And so they'll just walk up and they'll pull the cord out and you're left there with like, you know, nothing really. I mean, you have to turn the APU on to to get power, you know, back to the airplane or they have to like replug in. It's just like really frustrating. You know, the other time you, you, you see this happening is like, it's, the the ground crews will kind of sometimes hear the apu like starting of course it's very loud when you're outside the airplane you can tell the thing is firing up but they don't really understand that there's like this there's a significant lag time that it takes for the apu to actually like completely power up and start putting out you know adequate power to get you know power in the airplane so you know once again you know they, they'll they'll kind of hear the the apu and be like oh you know they have power you know you know, going to, you know, from the APU, like inside the airplane, they don't need this anymore. And, and once again, they don't understand also that there's like a, <clears throat> there's some configuration of buttons that need to, needs to be done. Uh, or at least, you know, to, to um, if you're operating properly, that needs to be accomplished first before you can, you know, go up and walk up and pull that power cord out. So, you know, I've never seen anything like this happen, but like they, they told us in ground school that if you were, you know, in this sort of situation, I mean, you can actually get an, an arc of electricity. So this could be, of course, dangerous for somebody on the ground and we don't want anybody to get hurt, you know, outside the airplane. So it's, it's just kind of, you know, one of those frustrating situations, but I, I thought I just wanted to explain that to you guys. You, you might've seen this at some point in time, if you've been a pastor on an airplane, anywhere, uh, these things do happen. They're just accidents and they're not meant to be that way, but uh, anyways, that, that is that. So, uh, last thing to wrap it up, um, the Q and a section, uh, once again, I, I really appreciate you guys participating and, and writing in questions and asking different things. It's part of what makes this fun for me. So today's comment comes from, um, and I apologize ahead of time. I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name, right. Um, but, uh, Debasish, uh, Gouda, uh, he has a question simply of, um, why are some of the circuit breakers in the flight deck uh, colored differently, uh, such as green and black? And you know, we talked about this a little bit in one of the segments, but just to kind of recap it, if you missed that one, um, this is a great question. Very observant. It's very attention grabbing. That the, you know, these these things like there's obviously a reason why they're colored differently, um, and that is the the green circuit breakers are monitored by the ECAM, so you actually get a message on the um, 
the uh, engine and warning display um, if one of them is tripped and the the black ones are not monitored so you wouldn't have any kind of indication um, that uh, one of those guys is tripped so you know and i said it in the last uh you know or the the time we talked about this i'm, I'm really not sure about all of the engineering that you know the decisions that were made like you know which ones needed to be monitored by the ecan which ones did, were determined not uh, necessary to be monitored i mean you would you would of course think the common sense would say well this is you know obviously the most important components are ones that would need to be monitored because they need immediate attention and uh, you know that that pretty much makes sense to me so uh, if anybody is an airbus engineer <laughs> or uh has, has better uh, data on that, I'd, I'd love to uh, hear about it and learn about it as well. So uh, that wraps up today's discussion, guys. Once again, I, I really appreciate you tuning in. It's a pleasure uh, doing these talks for you. And uh, until the next time, hope you have a great week and we'll talk to you soon.